Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Scholes. Today we have Chapter 3 in the story of B, Princess of the Dwarves. And here we're going to learn a little bit more about George and, well, the Protector, Freehold, the Squire. This is, which deals with education in general, and that of George in particular. George grew up in this castle next to B, whom he called sister in the way of friendship, though he knew she was not so. He had masters to teach him fencing, riding, swimming, gymnastics, dancing, hunting, falconry, tennis, and generally all the arts. He even had a writing master, an old clerk, humble in his ways, but inwardly proud, who taught him various styles of handwriting. The more beautiful the style was, the more difficult it was to read. George found little pleasure, and consequently little benefit, either in the lessons of this old clerk or in those of an old monk who gave grammatical instruction, using the most barbarous terminology. George could not make out why he should take the trouble to learn a tongue he could talk by nature, which is called the mother tongue. The only person he liked being with was the squire, Freehard, who, having sought adventures all over the world, knew the customs of men and of beasts, described all sorts of countries, and composed songs he did not know how to write down. Freehart was the only master who taught George anything, because he was the only one who liked him, and affectionate lessons are the only good lessons. But the two pedants, the writing master and the grammatical master who hated each other with all their heart, united in a common hatred of the old squire, whom they accused of inebriety. It was true that Freehart was rather too fond of going to a tavern called the Tin Jug, There he forgot his cares and composed his songs. He was certainly in the wrong. Homer composed songs even better than Freehart, and Homer only drank spring water. As to troubles, everybody has them, and it is not drinking wine but giving happiness to others that effaces them. But Freehart was an old man grown grey in the wars, loyal and meritorious, and the two masters ought to have hidden his weakness instead of reporting them with exaggeration to the Duchess. Freehart is a drunkard, said the writing master, and when he comes back from the tavern called the Tin Jug, he describes in the road large S's as he walks. I may say that this is the only letter he has ever shaped, for this drunkard is an ignoramus, your grace. The grammatical master added, As he staggers along, he sings songs that offend against every rule and follow no received form. He is totally ignorant of synecdoche, your grace. The Duchess had a natural dislike of meanness and tail-bearing. She did what all of us would have done in the same situation. She disregarded them at first. But as they kept on repeating their reports, she ended by believing them and determined to remove Freeheart. However, To make his exile honorable, she sent him to Rome to get the blessing of the Pope. What made this journey so long to the squire Freehart was the large number of taverns haunted by musicians which lay between the Duchy of the Clarides and the Papal City. The story will show how soon the Duchess was to regret that she deprived the two children of their most reliable protector. And that is chapter three. Less concerned, of course, with education than with educators, and how the two have ganged up on the poor squire. I can't wait to see where this portrayal leads us. This is Dan Scholes for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com, where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Next week, we'll continue with the story of B, Princess of the Dwarves. As always, thank you all so very much for listening. <laughs>